This What's New video is going to show all the tremendous amount of new tools we put into the latest release. The first tool is based on our daily and weekly value areas. Now, I found out recently that a lot of our traders are not using this tool. It's incredibly powerful, and we've had this out for about a month, where on a daily, weekly, and it also works intraday, but this tool is only going to show you on your intraday charts the daily and weekly ones. It lets you see where most of the trading happened during the previous day and during the previous week. The center line is called the point of control, and you have your upper and lower value areas. And these are tremendous areas of support resistance. They're real. And when price is underneath the point of control, it tends to trend down. When it's above yesterday's point of control, it tends to trend up. When it's above the upper value area, you tend to get 20 to 50 pip moves. And when it's under, it falls underneath the previous uh, day's lower value area, typically you're going to get a move down. When you don't, sometimes you have a false breakout. And when it comes back into that range, you get a nice explosion up to here. And sometimes here, and like you can see today, it continued up even more in the euro dollar. So this tool, since a lot of traders weren't using it, I am going to spend 10 or 15 minutes every night uploading the previous day's value areas and on a weekly basis doing the previous week's uh, value areas. And you can see them on your charts. You're going to be going to Add Script, and it's right at the bottom underneath FX uh, Value Areas. And this shows the daily value area up, the daily point of control. This is for the previous day, obviously, and the previous day's value area low. This shows the padding, which can add some color above and below the, the color in the middle so that it stands out. It's such a critical and key component to trading. I've used it for the last month, but I've had to have other charts up in order to see it. You know, if you only have one monitor, the odds are you're not going to do that. You're going to miss out of these incredibly useful support resistance areas. And the W stands for weekly, weekly value area up. Point of control for the previous week is an orange and previous week's value area low. This is the width in pixels of the previous days and weeks. So you, like you can see on the chart, the green, uh, yellow, and red is three pixels. And I have two pixels padding of this color here, gray, above and below it. I have 10 pixels for the weekly, which you know clearly stands out as much wider uh, areas. And so these areas are going to stand out from uh, all the other support resistance areas you use. So basically, how do you trade with this? How do you make money with it? These are areas of support resistance. You can see that today the dollar switch started off above yesterday's value area. And once it fell underneath there, it's likely to trend down. It's likely to find some support at last week's previous uh, lower value area. This is yesterday's uh, value area, which means pretty much most of the trading yesterday happened at this yellow area. It's very significant. It could find support here and go up, which it doesn't. When it breaks there, it's very likely to go down to the lower value area. And as I scroll over to the right, notice the lower value area uh, compared to the previous day's low. It's significantly above it. It's about 60 pips above the previous day's low. Today did not break the previous day's low. A lot of traders wait for breakouts of the previous day's high and low, but wouldn't you like to get into a breakout trade right here and catch 60 or 70 pips on the way down? I would, and especially if you only have an hour or two to trade, uh, being able to find trades that typically move 20, 30, and sometimes 50 pips uh, makes trading a lot easier, especially on choppy days. You know, um, So let's take a look at some of these uh, today. Do the euro dollar. Notice it was underneath yesterday's value area when it broke above there. It pretty much trended very smoothly up to the point of control of yesterday. This is where most of the volume basically yesterday traded. It's very key support and resistance. Coming up to it from underneath, it's resistance. There's likely to be selling, and there is. When it breaks above there, notice there's selling at the previous week's uh, upper value area. When it breaks above there, there's selling at yesterday's upper value area. It pulls back, and then it acts as support. This is a good place to buy. And again, the upper value area has a little bit of resistance. Once it breaks above there, you have clean sailing up um, another 93 pips. Look at yesterday's high right here, up close to 2,400. Being able to get into a breakout that's likely to move 20 to 50 pips, and in this case 93 pips, gives you a tremendous advantage over other traders that do not have these tools. It's an incredibly um, sophisticated tool, and instead of having to have up a daily chart for each currency you're trading 
And then an, another one for the weekly chart, if I hit period W, I change this chart to weekly, you can see last week's point of control right here, 1.2126. Notice where it is on the chart, 1.2126 right here. And that is the key areas that show up automatically on the chart. Let's look at some of the other ones today just so you get a feel for how good this is. You could trade with this and not any other tool. It's so good. Underneath the lower value area of yesterday, when it breaks above it, it's likely to find resistance here. This is your next profit target, and this is your next profit target. You know, it pulls back and finds support here. Resistance, once broken, becomes support. You'll see that frequently. And when it breaks above the point of control, it works its way up here. Normally, it's going to find resistance there, but this trend was so strong it shot right above there. But guess what happened? And you'll see this frequently, uh, day after day after day. When these areas get broken, a lot of times you have what's called a retest. And when price can't go back underneath there, you can buy right here, and it's likely to go the next FIB target up, which it does. And so you're in this trade right here around 97. You're out at 97.37. You made 37 pips on that. So, again, if you only have an hour, hour and a half to trade there in the day, just with these tools alone, you should be able to find and catch 10 to 20 pips a day. You know, my goal is to make 30 pips a day in an hour, hour and a half, and quit for the day, spend time uh, running my business, and also playing with my three-year-old son. And, you know, I don't want to be trading for five hours. It's, it's totally not necessary. So let's look at all the other examples here. You know, when you have lots of areas and the market's chopping around, you wait for it to break above there, you go long, look where it went, right to the next area. Came back down to the value area and yesterday's value area low. Remember, the middle line is the point of control. This is last week's point of control. You can color code those however you want. And notice, again, it went right up to that area. This is exactly like the previous example. Once these areas get broken, they tend to become support on the way down. Great place to go long right here at 92. This is your next profit target. Or you could just simply uh, draw your fibs on that last wave and guess where you want to get out of the trade. I'm going to go through all of them just so you can see how powerful this is. I already did that one, I guess. Uh, let's do the Australian dollar. It's underneath yesterday's value area. When it breaks above there, it trends up the rest of the day. And again, notice where the high of the day is. A lot of traders wait for breakouts of the high to get into this trade. It never broke above there. But I certainly want to know where that area is so I can you know, possibly catch 15 to 25 pips here by the pullback. Catch another 50 pips right there. Australian yen. Notice it's inside the value area. When it breaks above there, you get this explosion. Now, in this case, the previous day's high is not too far above, but I'd much rather get into this trend breakout right here at 82.36 versus 73. That's a tremendous advantage over other traders that don't have these tools. This one started the day off above the value area, and it trended up all day. Dollar Swiss. Previous day's value area high. Once it came into the this area, it's likely to work its way down to the previous week's value area low and yesterday's average price. And it found support there. When it broke that, you have this nice trade from 98.07 all the way down to uh, 75. So you made about 25 pips there. And then, like I said many times, once an area gets broken, it tends to retest it there. This support area is now resistance. A great place to go short, and it fell from around 9,800 all the way to 9,700. Dollar cat. Notice the resistance at this area. It broke underneath there, and it also broke the yesterday's average price. You get short once it goes underneath this low right here. This is a good profit target. Again, once these areas get broken, they tend to the support area once broken becomes resistance. Great place to go short here at 1.026, and it falls. Uh, you know, about 40 pips. You can draw your fibs off this previous swing, too, if you like, and get out at the fib targets. Notice it went right to the 1.618 fib target. So before I go to the next uh, tools that we've put in the new uh, version, let me just repeat. Daily for D, weekly for W, the colors for the uh, daily value up, point of control, which is the average price yesterday. We spent most of the time trading at the POC. Daily value area down. The price from this green to the red one is where it spent 68% of the day, day's volume trading. And breakouts above or breakdowns below tend to lead, like you see, to big moves. The padding color, which gets put above and below the color. And then the weekly value area up, point of control, and down. This is how many pixels wide 
the daily and weekly is. If you do not want to see the daily on your chart, if you only want to see the weekly for some reason, put zero. And then this is the padding. How many pips or how many pixels above and below the color to put the, the gray padding? So if you put a zero for the width, it's not going to show the daily version, only uh, the monthly. I'm sorry, the, the previous weeks. As you can see, it doesn't show the daily. It only shows the, the weekly. And some people, I put that in there because some people might want on 30-minute charts, hourly charts, or 240-minute charts to only see the previous week's value. And then on your intraday charts, if, if you so desire, you may only want to see the previous day's value area lines. And so that way, you you know, you might have less cluttered up charts. It might make more sense for you to do that. Myself, I'm going to have them both on my five or six pips per bar range charts that I trade with. Um, that's how I plan on using these. So that's the FX value areas and let's go and remove that and go over some of the new tools we've uh, put in this new version. This is one of probably the top three or four releases we've ever done. First of all, moving average. It now has a, a DSP option. And basically this is a super, super fast, uh, for lack of a better term, moving average that's based on uh, digital signal processing techniques. Notice the 20 period moving average on your five minute chart here. I'm going to put a uh, yellow one on here that does not use it just so you can see how much faster it is than a regular moving average. Uh, it's just ultra fast. And a lot of traders are going to use this to you know, maybe look for when to get into counter trend trades, when to get back into the trend. Notice, you know, what a great timing tool it, it does. Uh, it's phenomenal. It's much faster. And this same technology we've added to many of our other tools, such as the containment bands. Now it has a digital signal processing center line. So if you have, you know, the regular containment bands up, now today's move went outside of even these containment bands, but if I take that off, notice as price catches up without the DSP on there, uh, the upper bands are going to be even lower than they were. You see that? Significantly lower. Uh, 25, 30 pips lower. And especially when you use this for scalping, and I'm going to go over uh, how to do that now. Let me remove all these and we'll put them back on. On a range bar basis, put a 5R chart up here. And what I found, uh, and it works phenomenal for scalping, is using a 5 or 15 minute containment band with the digital signal processing te technology in there. You click DSP, 5 minute, and you don't need to see the center color. But these bands are phenomenal places to look for counter trend trades. And obviously this was trending up today, so you might have bought here, you lost, you got in again, you made some money, got in here, made some money, and so forth. Because these are faster, uh, it just works you know, much better than uh, using the old bands. Notice this explosive move down, came up to the upper band, go short, go short. You know, you got in almost at the per picture perfect time. Now, if you didn't have the digital signal processing uh, technology in these containment bands, notice, you know, when I uncheck this, see the price right here where they are? They're much lower. So if you had sold here, it would have went against you. If you sold here, it went against you you know, 15 pips. Uh, it's not nearly as accurate as using the digital signal processing. It's a huge improvement. So I'm going to take that off. We're going to, uh, and some traders might want to use on a five pip per bar chart. Go to, you know, moving average again. You might have a super fast five period moving average and just simply shift it two bars to the right. I like to make them two pixels thick. And you can use this as a timing method on range charts. It trends down. You wait for a decent sized pullback, 15 to 25 pips. When it goes underneath this area, you go short, you made money. You pretty much broke even. You go short again here, you made 30 pips. You go short again here, you know, and so forth. That's one other method that I've been using with great success that hopefully you uh, adopt as well. Another tool that's in the new version is uh, an enhancement to the MACD. I'm personally not using this because sometimes it crosses a little bit late, but uh, it is an improvement over the regular MACD. 
because you know you can see in some cases it's amazing it went short it went short here and it got you out of that trade you know a little bit early right here uh, you can use it for timing and methods in this case it's pretty uh, early into that trend and it's also pretty decent for looking for counter trends if you have a double bottom any place and the second bottom has a slightly higher low on the MACD than the first one that's typically a, a reversal here you can see it made a lower low but this had a higher higher low than this that's a, usually a sign of a reversal so some people might like that especially if you like the old MACD this is much better and it, of course this works on all time frames as well you notice how it went short right here pretty early into that move and it kept you short until about right here I'm going to roll back up. This one, it was a little bit late in getting in. It was perfect on the first one. Again, this uses very advanced digital signal processing technology, and it's very fast. Some traders are going to love this. and uh, you know, Some traders that have given to it to beta test uh, are going to continue to use it. They love it. You know, It's working for them. Me, I don't want to use it myself. Uh, I just like, the dig I like to use the uh, five period digital signal processing based moving average shift of two bars to the right which you'll see in future blog videos. So to summarize this video these are all the new things. We have uh, the digital signal processing technology put into the containment bands. It is put into the moving average obviously. You want to uncheck this. You can't have them both checked at the same time. It is also now part of the MACD. Oh, and lastly, I forgot uh, the FX Power Index, which measures the percentage of currencies trending up or down. It is also in there as well. So uh, it will give you flips earlier. This is the percentage of currencies above or below the 15-minute bars 20-period moving average. When you have the DSP pushed on, you tend to get flips sooner. It will tend to shift these to the left a little bit and get you into trades earlier. And because it is so fast, it's also quicker in going from low intensity to high intensity. And of course, uh, this technology is also uh, built into the FX build a trend histogram, which we use on our range charts. So it's, you'll see better and faster signals for that. And if you want to draw the color strip thin, you can do that as well. And you will see, you know, it tends to give very accurate uh, entries into new trends right here on that bar right here. It got you in and it kept you in. Let's look at the euro dollar for when it went up today. Notice it shifted lightly green here and then dark green very quickly. Kept you in right up here to the top. Uh, so you'll find that, you know, and this is the reason why I created the digital signal processing technology. It wasn't just for the moving average, which I've actually found to be very useful. Uh, it's for the other tools like our containment bands, MACD, and of course the FX Power Index, which is built into many of our scripts, which are now updated and will be quicker and faster. And hopefully you will love it as much as I do. Spend an hour or two a day, try to get your 20 or 30 pips. Some days have 50 pips, some days you're obviously going to lose. Keep your loss days small, your winning days big, and you know, enjoy your life.